Hello, welcome to this video. Right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a secure, simple, and highly available HCD cluster. Actually, I've covered this process in a separate video as part of Kubernetes connecting to an external HCD, but I want to redo this video with later version of uh, HCD. I think last time when I did this video, it was 3.4. something, but this time I'm going to use uh, I'm going to be using 3.5.1. Apart from that, the whole process is going to be identical. So most of you might have come across that video, but I want to redo this video so that I can keep this video as a separate, just focusing on HCD, so people can search for HCD cluster setup in my channel and in my playlist. Okay, so I've got my notes here for this video. Let me walk you through the setup that I've got. So my host machine is a Dell XPS laptop with 8 CPU, 16 gig of RAM running Arch Linux and I'm going to be using Vagrant along with KVM LibVirt for bringing up the virtual machines. We're going to be setting up a highly available 3 node HCD cluster uh, with the IP address 172.16.16.221, 222 and 223. So once we set up our HCD cluster there's two ports that you need to remember so 2379 and 2380. So 2380 port is the uh, port that listens for traffic between the member nodes. So all the nodes in your HCD cluster communicate between themselves using this 2380 port and 2379 is the port for the client traffic. So that's going to be our HCD cluster setup and the communication between the members and the traffic from the clients will be encrypted. We'll be using TLS. We'll be generating certificates which I will cover in a minute. And all these are Ubuntu 2004 machines and I'll be using Vagrant to bring up these virtual machines. You can use VirtualBox. You can use Vagrant up from my environment. That will bring up all your virtual machines using VirtualBox but because I'm running in on a Linux based host machine. I'm going to be using Libre because that's a little quicker compared to VirtualBox. Okay, so regarding secure communication, we will be creating some certificate and key pairs. The first thing we will be doing is create a certificate authority, a certificate and key pair for the certificate authority, and then we will create a certificate key pair, another certificate key pair used by the HCD nodes, and the certificate for the HCD nodes will be signed by the CS certificate, but will be signed by the certificate authority themselves. So the idea is if you if the HCD nodes trust the certificate authority then it will also trust the certificate signed by the certificate authority so once we create the certificate pair we will bundle this up and put this on all these HCD nodes so for this demo bear in mind I'm just creating one certificate and key pair but ideally for more secure communication you would be creating individual certificate and key pair for each of the nodes and for the clients to talk to the HCD cluster but to keep things simple I'm going to be creating just one certificate and key pair put them on all the HCD notes and I'll be using the same HCD key pair for the client connection as well. So now let me open up my Kubernetes repository. I'll put a link to my Kubernetes repository in the video description. Right, in the Kubernetes repository, I've got this folder, kubeadm external hcd, and the documentation that I'm going to follow is this one, number two, simple cluster TLS. And my Vagrant file is in this folder, hcd infra, and if I show you the Vagrant file, it is quite simple. I'm using generic Ubuntu 2004 Vagrant box, and I have two providers, VirtualBox or LibVirt. By default, if you do Vagrant up, it will use the VirtualBox provider. I'll be using libvirt provider and in any case it'll be using one cpu and one gig of memory that's that's all to it and i'm running a bootstrap script let me show you the bootstrap script I also increase the font size all right all i'm doing is uh, this is ubuntu virtual machine so i have to enable the password authentication it's disabled by default so i'm enabling the password authentication and i'm also setting the root password to etcd admin so that's all i'm doing in my bootstrap uh, steps okay so let's go and follow our documentation. So the first thing is I need to bring up all the three virtual machines. So before that, I need to git clone my Kubernetes repository, cd to Kubernetes, and then to kube adm external etcd, and then to etcd infra. Here I've got my Vagrant files. So all I'm going to do is Vagrant up. You can just do Vagrant app that will use VirtualBox provider, but in my case, I'm going to be using the LibVirt provider. It's going to take less than a minute actually, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, the command completed. It took less than 30 seconds, and all the virtual machines should be up and running. If I do virtual list, yes, we've got etcd1, 2, and etcd3. All right, so I'm going to go back to my play directory. 
and the first thing is I'm going to download a couple of binaries. So I'm running this on my host machine, which is Linux machine. I'm downloading CFSSL and CFSSL JSON. Then setting the executable permission, moving that to user local bin so that it's in the path. So let's run that. Okay, that's done. Now if I do which CFSSL JSON, which CFSSL, we've got them in the path. So first thing is we're going to create a certificate authority for that. We've got a cluster, sorry, certificate authority configuration. Basically it says any certificate, the default expiry is going to be 8760 hours, which is 365 days or one year. And then we have our certificate signing request configuration. And finally, we use the CFSSL gen cert command to create the certificate and key pair for the certificate authority itself, passing in the certificate signing request JSON here. Okay. So let's copy the whole thing run it here all right so if i take a look at the files here so we have ca.pem so that's the certificate authorities certificate and the certificate authorities private key all right so the next thing we're going to do is create the the tls certificate so the one that i was talking about here so we're going to be creating the certificate and keeper and sign the certificate with the cs certificate all right, so we have again, we have the certificate signing request configuration. You can put in whatever details that's apt for you. And one thing to note here is because I'm using the same certificate and key pair for all the three nodes, I have to include the IP address of all the three etcd nodes. So basically I'm defining three variables here uh, to capture the individual IP address of all the three etcd nodes. This certificate is going to be valid for any host that has localhost 127.0.0.1 or one of these IP addresses. If you were to create it has separate individual certificate and key pair for all your etcd nodes which i highly recommend then don't use these two lines here just make sure you have these three entries localhost 127.0.0.1 and the nodes ip address all right so that's the certificate signing request again we are using cfssl gen cert command but this time the command is slightly different that's because we are also passing in the certificate authority details and the certificate signing request we are creating here and we are going to sign the certificate with the certificate authorities certificate okay so let's copy all these paste it here okay so that's done let's take a look here so it's cd.pem so that's the certificate this one and we have etcdkey.pem, which is the private key. And we will be copying all these three to all the three machines now. Copy the certificates to the etcd node. So what we are going to copy is the certificate and key we just generated and also the certificate of the certificate authority, which is this certificate. Okay, so I've got a simple for loop and SCP command to copy the ca.pem, etcd certificate and the etcd private key, copying it to the home directory of the root user. And then later we will move it to appropriate directory. Okay, copy that. It's going to ask for the password for each of the nodes, which is etcd admin. That's first node, second node, and that's the third node. All right, so we're done with bringing up the virtual machines, creating the required certificates, and all the certificates are in place in all of our etcd nodes. So now we're gonna log into all of the etcd nodes and do some magic. All right, for that, I'm going to open up three panes and let's log into each of them. So root, I'm logging in as the root user to each of these etcd nodes, 221, 222, 223, and I'm going to synchronize all the three panes so it saves some typing for me. And the password is etcd admin cool so we are logged into the three etcd nodes and the first thing we're going to do is create etc etcd pki directory and move all the three files that we just copied from my host machine to etc etcd pki so if i do an ls so that's the home directory of the root account and we've got all the three files let's copy this paste it Cool. it's all gone under its etcd pki directory and now we're going to download etcd and etcd ctl binary move it to use the local bin and i'm using etcd version 3.5.1 which is the latest at the time of recording this video copy okay so that's done and if i now do which etcd we have etcd and if i do 
which etcd ctl we have etcd ctl as well all right the next thing is we're going to create the system d unit file for the etcd service so that we can start stop restart manage the etcd service basically the important thing to note here is the bunch of options that we are using for the etcd command okay so name is going to be this is the variable that i'm capturing etcd name which is going to be the short horse name and then the certificate file the key file and the ca certificate file and we have listen peer url which is the the member of the etcd nodes they listen on port 2380 on the node ip which is here node ip and then listen client url so that's the traffic coming from the client not from the etcd member so that will be on port 2379 initial cluster so make sure you capture all the three etcd nodes in this option and then the initial cluster state will be new so when we bring up all the three servers at the same time it will form a cluster and we can't be running this on all the three nodes without changing because this node IP I've hardcoded the node IP you need to change the node IP depending on where you're running this service so for that I'm going to turn off synchronization because I have to run this on each node by after changing this node IP variable right for that let me first copy this and open up a text editor paste it for the first node the IP is 221 so there's going to be no change let's run that right that's run and switch to etcd2 and in the text editor change the IP node IP to 222 copy paste that's done and finally to etcd3 the ip address is 223 copy paste all right let's enable synchronization back on right so we've copied our systemd unit file and now we're going to be because this is a new system the unit file we have to run the daemon reload option and then we're going to be enabling and start you can do system ctl enable etcd system ctl start etcd or you can pass the minus minus now option which will enable as well as start the service let's do that etcd service should be running now let's check system ctl status etcd yep they are all running fine Right, it's time to verify the etcd cluster. Basically, when you are trying to run etcd against a cluster that's TLS encrypted, you have to pass in the certificate details and you also want to specify the endpoint option to the etcd CTL binary so that it knows which endpoint to connect to. So in this case, we're going to test running this on just one of the worker, sorry, one of the etcd node. Right, so what I'm posing here is the endpoint option. So I'm telling etcd ctl to connect to the local host on port 2379 which is the client port and I'm passing in the CA certificate which is ca.pem we moved all these to etc etcd pki directory and then the certificate and key and then the command following the etcd ctl and we have to be using the etcd ctl api version 3 here all right copy that and run it basically I'm running it on all the nodes but anyways let me turn off the synchronization Run the command again. So member list. So we have three members. That's fine. So the easier way would be to instead of passing in all these options to every single etcd ctl command, you can export all these to an environment variable and then you can just start running the etcd ctl command on its own. It's going to be a lot easier. Right. And again, for the etcd ctl endpoint, make sure to use all the etcd member nodes, not just one node, so that you get a high chance of connecting to a cluster when one node or more node goes offline, you still have access to the cluster. Okay, let's do that. Let's copy this. Basically, I'm exporting all the required variables. So it's CD, CTL, API, endpoint, CS, cert, cert, and key. Okay, copy that, paste. And now, basically, we can run etcd CTL member list. That's right. etcd CTL endpoint status. etcd CTL endpoint health. Everything is working fine. Okay, let me exit out of all these. Right, I'm back in my host machine. Do I have etcd ctl? No, I don't have. And I'm in the play directory where I have all my certificates. Let me download etcd ctl here as well. So the command is here. etcd ctl. Copy that. I have to be root user or prefix sudo appropriately. Okay, exit out of the root account. Now I can do which etcd ctl. We have etcd ctl and I'm going to change the commands slightly. So let's export all the variables to my local system. 
Let me paste that in a text editor because I'm in the play directory where I have all my certificates. So I have to change the path. So CS cert is ca.pem and the certificate is hcd.pem. Key is hcd key. Okay, cool. That's what I need. Copy that. Paste it. Cool. Now I can do hcd ctl member list hcd ctl endpoint health hcd ctl endpoint status everything is working fine cool so that is a very simple secure hcd cluster like i said don't use the same certificate and key pair for all the all the nodes just create individual certificate key pair and also a separate certificate key pair for the client connections Right, so let me go back to Kubernetes, kubeadm, external etcd, etcd infra, which is where I've got my Vagrant file. I'm going to do some cleanup, Vagrant destroy. Right, all gone, Versh list. That brings to the end of this video. Give this a try. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'll be happy to help and I will see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.